All right, hello and welcome. I'm Michael Jobody and I'll be hosting this live stream today, as well as the award ceremony on the 25th and 26th of November. Welcome to the fourth edition of the Mirabhan UK Film Awards, powered by the Mirabhan Company and founded by our incredible festival director, Jay Minari, who is with us today. Say hello, Jay. Hello. Awesome. So the Mirabhan UK Film Awards, or MUFA, is a British London-based IMDb qualifying film festival focused on diversity in outer movies. Altogether, it is created despite all the challenges of an indie low-budget production. We are a member of the Film Hub London and BFI fan. MUFA provides a spotlight for underrepresented, emerging, and experienced independent filmmakers through weekly live stream Q&A sessions, as well as with its in-person networking opportunities and an exciting festival event taking place on the 25th to 26th of November at the Bromley Picture House Cinema. If you haven't done it yet, check out our festival tickets and VIP pass for the event and subscribe on our upcoming streaming platform, Stream Outer, to watch all the officially selected candidates of this edition and vote for your favorite, which will win the Best Film Audience Award. All right, let's get the ball rolling with our first guest, super excited to please welcome Marcelo Quinones Altamirano from Mexico, a finalist for Best Editing and Best Experimental Short with their film, Kuleshov Effect. Another breathtaking diversity-driven story where one day, all of your fears knock on your door. You will have to offer them a good coffee in the morning and a good drink at night. Let's have a look. Tes yeux au premier plan. Tes yeux sont toutes les planètes. Tes yeux, ce sont des émirats fondus. Tes yeux sont les seuls. La lumière qui était autrefois mon allié est maintenant mon ennemi. Et si je devenais aveugle? Awesome. I feel it. I always feel like it's like a cliffhanger. Like I want to see more. And I feel like everyone in the audience wants to just learn more about the film and actually be able to, to go and see it. Uh, but Marcelo, I'm so excited to have you on the live stream today. First of all, the Kuleshov effect in general is one of my favorite film editing effects. And what you've been able to do with your film is absolutely incredible. I know the viewers watching that trailer, you know, left wanting more, as I had mentioned. Uh, but such, such a pleasure to have you on. How are you doing today? Oh, um Thank you for, for uh, uh, watching my film, and it's a great opportunity to exchange cultural uh, things, you know? Oh, definitely. I mean, as I mentioned, the clue shop effect, it's, it's just, I love like your art, like the, the visuals. Uh, like just, I guess my first question would be like, what inspired you to create this story? Was it something that you always were planning to do from like a young age, or is it something that just kind of developed throughout your life's journey? How did you come up with with this idea for this film? Well, um, Michael, my my um, cinema career, it's been based on experimental cinema. I, I think I was specialized in that area of cinema. Um, and when I was in uni in college, I, I started to study film and I was trapped by by experimental cinema. So it, it, it's uh, one of my, my most powerful influences in, in, in cinema. And uh, the sh this short film was uh, a really big and long process to to make it happen because it it, it is a tribute to my I I, I just have uh, the, the two years ago I just have a, a really really strong depression 
because uh, I thought I was going to lose my my vision. Um, so this is this short film was was about that. No, uh, it was about uh, this fear of losing the vision as a photographer filmmaker. No, what mm. what 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 will it happen if 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 I lose my my sense? No, uh, mm. so I was dealing with a really strong depression uh, the, the last couple of years. Um, I'm okay now, uh, but I was also um, having uh, PTSD, uh, post-traumatic uh, traumas. Um, yeah. So I, I needed to stop in, in my life. I was obviously, you know, we, we have this pandemia and pandemia connected me again to story film and to, and to try to make a more introspective, um, uh, like an introspective moment to, to see where I was going with cinema. So uh, the only way that I was going to connect again with cinema was trying to do a new short film. Because I haven't do any short films since this one uh, for a long time. And I was dealing with more many, many problems. So I decided to, to write a poem about losing my my vision uh, and the first draft of that poem was really bad <laughs> but it was the beginning of something um, I was going into a therapy um, and then I, I was going into I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you but I was going to a, 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 a how do you say in English I don't know but a mushroom therapist uh, to deal with okay. the pressure yeah. Um, and one one day in that therapy, I, I realized that I needed to have a to make a new short film, and this is what happened uh, after that therapy. I just started to write down the, the ideas. I didn't have too much money to to make this production, and obviously, I wanted to shoot it in Super 8 because I think Super 8 is is the it's like a, a format in which uh, it because it's not perfect. It's always uh, a mystic how it's going to be developed or how was the the film storage. So you never know how it's gonna what, what's going to happen with Super 8. No, you can you can estimate some results, but I think Super 8 it's really a good format to to emphasize roughness. And this short film is about not being well. And obviously, I choose Super 8 to to have more presence in the aesthetic of the short film. So well, that's how we made it, but it was also a, a very problematic uh, uh, process because at uh, one day before we shoot, my DP, my DP, the, the DP, uh, his father just died, and and I, I was like, okay, this this short film, it's not going to happen soon, you know. Uh, but he decided to shoot it, and and I was really amazed by motivation we had in the set um and that's how it happened you know that's amazing actually i was i'm about to ask about the super eight because it's really poetic by itself and i think just using you know film uh in, in its raw format uh i think it actually brings us closer to authenticity of the message you were trying to convey so I was actually going to ask you about the inspiration from other probably French uh, new wave kind of films. I was thinking of, you know, Buniel, uh, the Le Chien Andalou, uh, this sort of films that I felt there were clear references uh, in your short. Uh, so I would love to hear a little bit about that and uh, about the actual, you know, developing. How did it go? Did you actually obtain what you were hoping for or there were things that didn't come out as you wanted uh well first of all uh, jay the my influences are buñuel in this short film also and and yeah surrealistic uh, movements uh but also uh stan brackage uh, he's an american filmmaker um so yeah i combined maybe two, these two elements to, to make the cool shot effect and also uh, as you know the name of my production company is birth of the noise uh, the the name of it, it was taken from Silvia Bertov, this uh, Russian filmmaker. So, I have all these three kind of influences put it in there. Uh, but the the way which I decided to use the Super Eight is 
is as you are saying the roughness of the of the format you know uh it it get it gives i think more honesty things uh to portray this this kind of uh uh elements and and because the short film is really sensitive it's about a guy that is going to lose his his uh he's going to be possibly blind i decided to use this uh format because also it is really hard to shoot without light you no know, in this format and, and And it was kind of that what I expected. And in the development, I didn't know exact how 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 it's going to to to, to come out. And the results were really good. Many shots were taken off because it was really bad. The the, the, the grain was was so uh, present in, in in that moment. So I decided to to, to take an, take them out from the short. In the whole resort, I think it was it, it was great. Also, there are many out of focus moments on pur on purpose because that was one of my my concerns in the in like in film festivals that they didn't uh, quite understand that the out of focus was uh, kind of a uh, statement, you know. Yeah, that's important to actually. Uh, I think what I love uh, about conveying as a message is that. Films don't have to look perfect, and um, I think that's a, a way where that makes the audience be biased about you know when they're watching something they will be talking about technical things that they are not really uh, you know experts of, but they start speaking as if they were, and they stop enjoying the film as an art form. They start judging the film with again uh, technical uh, sides that they are not really mastering, so they don't know they don't understand and it's really important to state what you're doing with your film that you know there are things that are done on purpose that they are not mistakes they are nothing is really a mistake it's just it's a different way of, of expressing yourself um and i i really enjoyed uh the way you played this you know sort of this card on your film thanks jay and you know what it's really amazing that that i didn't expect that this show film had uh kind of uh, success in out, outside from, from Mexico because I, I didn't expect nothing about this film. I just wanted to make it as a therapy, you know, and as an exercise to connect again with cinema. And then the, then, then when I started to send it to, to festivals, it, it, it started to make some some noise. And I'm really happy that you are, are taking the time to watch it and, and to analyze it. And, and it's really important for me that because You know, experimental cinema, it's its not a, like a famous, uh, as famous as, as you know, as, as a conventional cinema. So the spaces are really, really small to, uh, to, to, to have uh, the, the projection of these films. So. Yes, yeah, exactly. It's the, the, what we actually do with our festival, we'll try to give a voice to bold untold stories and uh, underground cinema. So that's that's actually... Definitely, your film belongs to our team, basically. Michael, do you want to do any greetings at the end now? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I just I just wanted to say, Marcelo, I had an initial question, but you kind of answered it just kind of on the, the lens of the, the colors you use in your films. I also watch your demo reel. It seems to be like a common theme. Like, I love the, it's very colorful, and I feel like you create like a very warm and intimate environment with your film. And um, But you kind of covered it with like using the Super 8 and um, yeah, adopting that that style of, of filmmaking. But I just want to say, I, I really appreciate that. I'm a visual guy and um, yeah, I just really appreciate that that style of art that you've created. Um, but yeah, altogether, it's been a real pleasure getting to know your story, um, your interests and what kind of brought you into making this film, some of your inspirations. I just want to thank you so much, Mar Marcelo, for coming on and sharing your experience. I'm sure you've inspired so many people listening today uh, to inspire them to Um, maybe create their own films or to understand the different types of, of filming techniques that are out there. And congratulations again on the Kuleshov effect. Uh, so with that, I'd like to mention just some quick reminders for the listeners um, for some upcoming Q&A sessions that we have. So just a quick reminder, all shortlisted candidates will be available on your streaming platform, on our streaming platform, sorry, from the 25th of October until the 3rd of December. And you can vote for your favorite to win the Best Film Audience Award. So you can basically visit the MUFA website, click on films and streaming and subscribe to streamouter.com. When the platform goes live, you'll be able to like the video and you can basically pick the one that you'd like to vote for. 
The award ceremony will take place at the Bromley Picture House Cinema. As I mentioned, it is a beautiful venue on the 25th to 26th of November. It's just a 15 minute ride from London Victoria Station, so not too far away. And this is when all the winners will be announced and all the finalist films will be screened. To get tickets, check the link in the comments section of this live stream or visit mirabanukfilmawards.co.uk. Thank you, Marcelo, and thank you, Jay, so much. Such an awesome live stream. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye for now. Cheers.